When our doctor orders that we will have a scan, like a CT scan or a cardiac cath, that kind of a thing, many times we might be a little concerned about the radiation, but how often do we think about or are concerned about the contrast medium that they use when they do the test? Yeah. You know, a lot of things we do in medicine are pretty cavalier. We get the information we want. We know there are risks to it. We don't tend to focus on that as doctors so much, Vicki. You know, we're more interested in getting answers to questions that we have about how we're going to give a certain kind of treatment. You know, I knew years ago I had um, a myelogram. They don't do mm. those much anymore. They usually do MRIs or CT scans or something. And I had a myelogram, and I'm sensitive to iodine. I'll say. And I could feel every place where it was going in my back. And I kept saying, that feels weird. That's uncomfortable. I can feel it here and there. And I could hear the doctor saying to you, she's not supposed to feel it, da-da-da, you know. But he was kind of nervous about it. Well, many years later, I had to have a scan. I don't remember if it was a PET scan or a CT scan. A CT scan. And I, you know, we told them that I was sensitive to iodine, and luckily nothing appeared to happen. But, you know, many people, because of the iodine that's in it, even if you're not allergic to the iodine, can cause hyperthyroidism. And I don't well, know if it's just, just from one, things. I don't know if it's just, from one time. Well, see, that's a new study that came out that's talking about that. We didn't even know about that. <laughs> the main things we were concerned about before were the kinds of reactions like anaphylactic shock or some for, of the kind allergies. of... allergies. Yeah, or mm -hmm. some other kind of acute infection or effects that it has in the kidneys because it can cause kidney dysfunction, and it does in more people than you'd think. You're looking at, at risks when you're using these uh, iodine, iodinated contrast mediums you're looking at risks that range somewhere between, I'd say, 2 or 3% and about 10%. So it's so, not like they don't happen. So now that we know that it can affect our thyroid function, mm -hmm. um, is that just from one time or is that... Yes, but it would be a minor thing. And what they're doing is they're pointing out that, yes, it even affects the thyroid, which everybody's going, well, that's not too big a surprise because the thyroid is known for collecting iodine. It's how it makes thyroid hormone. It makes T3 and T4, which are forms of thyroid hormone. So to me, that's like the icing on the cake. It's saying, my God, it's affecting so many different things, and we don't really take it too seriously. Well, there are a lot of medications and things that can affect um, this contrast medium. To make it even more risky to use. Right. Things like the non anti-inflammatory drugs or beta blockers or a drug that's used for diabetes called glucophage or metformin. Uh, we just have to be cognizant of the fact that whenever we put something in a human being that's not meant to be there and isn't there naturally, there are side effects and complications that very often we'll find out about after we've been using them on enough people. If there we, are drugs. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and if we don't anticipate that or do this, the clinical trials properly before they come to market, then they're going to be studying things on you and me, which is what's happened here with this iodinated contrast. So is there another contrast they could use besides... Uh, well, they've iodine? tried some in the past, and they've taken those off the market, too. So it's not so easy. I mean, So what do you do to find out if somebody has uh, a heart blockage or... Well, that's a problem. So yeah. we, what Vicki's saying is we use these contrast media so that we can identify where blocks are in the heart if we're expecting that there's coronary artery problems. The cardiac or, cath. Yeah, or, or if, there, if we do an examination of the carotid artery using a dye which we inject, that's what tells us whether or not there's a blockage there or there's an ulcer or something we need to do. So this information that we're getting is very valuable and it tells us how to proceed. Should we use medical therapies or should we be using some kind of surgical procedure? What, is it, what does that blood vessel look like? And we do it for a lot of other things. Whenever we need contrast in tissues, particularly when we're looking at blood vessels, so in, in cases where there's cancer, where we have lots of new blood vessel growth, it's called neoangiogenesis, this would be something that tells us, is this a cancer or not a cancer? Are there other ways you can determine that, though? There are always other ways to do it. The question is, is what's going to give you the best answer for the situation that you're in? So it's not like I should say I would say we should throw these things out. We should just use them very cautiously in people. Well, I think sometimes they're overdone. Oh, that's the point. 
And exactly. especially, too, like with people with cancer, when they're trying to follow the progression of the cancer, because maybe they're making it worse, and well, maybe something else could happen. On occasion, that's going to happen. Our curiosity, you know, our curiosity kill the, the cat, cat, they say. Well, it may be that it, it would do that for us, too, if we're, if we're not cautious. Another place where this comes into play is, you know, we had the big thing from Fukushima, where all the radiation was out there. And we're all talking about, gee, maybe we should be taking iodine, okay, in the form of pills or capsules or, or liquids. So and we'd fill it up so that the nuclear iodine wouldn't, get, wouldn't have room to get in there. Well, <laughs> it was to try and saturate the, that's right. That's a better way. It's to, to saturate <laughs> the gland so that the radioactive stuff wouldn't be concentrated there. But the doses you were giving were much, much bigger than what we do in iodated contrast media. And in that situation, we thought, well, maybe it's okay, we'll stress the thyroid out for a while. But here we have another situation that just points out, sometimes conservatism is better until we don't know the, until we know the, the answers to the questions that might be posed by these kinds of drugs that we use to help us get more information about what's going on in the body, maybe just think about it twice. <laughs>